Okay. <coughs> Good morning. Let's begin. The homework assignment is due on Wednesday that includes the evaporation and infiltration. Um, we're going to, at the beginning of class today, go over some of the problem solving stuff related to infiltration that you'll need for that homework assignment. And then we'll jump back into the theory to kind of uh, fill in the gaps on how these problem solving estimations have been made and what the rationale is for them. But just to make sure that we get through all of the calculation based stuff that you'll need to see for the assignment, we'll kind of jump ahead to that. Uh, the midterm exam is on Friday. I've already mentioned in a previous class that that's going to be uh, partly concept questions. It's partly problem solving. Uh, for the assignment, you can prepare a formula sheet. Uh, it can include procedures, notes, summary. Uh, but that formula sheet you'll only be able to access during the second part of the exam, which is the problem solving. And so there won't be any sense of putting definitions or concept type material on there because I'll ask you to set that aside and the exam will be given in two parts. The concept questions first. When you finish that, you can exchange it out for problem solving. So your formula sheet that you prepare for the exam can include both sides of a single page. So you can put whatever you like on that. But keep in mind that when you're doing problem solving with software, you have to start with the blank workbook. You know, if it's Excel, it has to be a blank Excel spreadsheet. You can't adapt a previous homework assignment or one of the template files that I've prepared. So one of the things that sometimes is useful is to put, like, column titles on your formula sheet, and that can kind of serve as a uh, reminder of what the process is. So are there any questions related to the announcements? All right. In class on Friday, we watched a video that showed water moving down through the soil. And uh, here is a schematic representation of that same thing. And assume that at the surface it's raining. And as you go down through the uh, soil, this graph is uh, moisture content. The further to the right it goes, and depth actually means how, down, how far down from the surface you are. Um, what this curve is showing is that there's a wave of moisture uh, once it begins to rain and so this initial moisture content could be thought of as what, how much water was in the soil before a storm began. And remember it's not going to be zero. The only way that you would get zero moisture in soil is by baking it in an oven. And so even before a storm, there's some moisture. And it's, for the most part, uh, tightly bound to the soil grains themselves, to the outside. So it's kind of like a, a wet coating around the soil grains. But then there's still a lot of air in the void spaces between soil particles. And so what this curve is is that uh, at the surface, there may be a zone of saturation, meaning that all of the void spaces are filled with water. And then as you go down through the soil, the moisture content gradually decreases. Or the other way to think about it is that the closer you get to the saturation zone, the moisture content is increasing. And so this is an illustration of the capillary, partly the capillary effect. It partly is taking into account the uh, suction pressure that the soil has for water. It's that attractive representation and it can be measured as a pressure of how much, uh, how eager the soil is to be in contact with the water that's drawing it down through the surface and it's partly that there is pooling at the surface that's pushing the water downward through those pores. So this is an actual graph or at least a, a conceptual graph that's showing that there would be several different curves, a transition zone, a gradual wetting front, but to uh, simplify the calculations, we don't have such a sophisticated gradual transition between fully saturated and initial moisture content. Instead, during the green amp simplification, when we're doing calculations, what we assume is that there is a wave that immediately goes from the initial moisture content up to saturation. So we in performing the green amped calculation, we're kind of simplifying reality. It's a model for the movement of water downward through the soil and 
All models simplify reality in some sense. And the way that the green amped equation is simplifying reality is by just assuming that we go straight from the initial moisture to the saturation zone and it kind of ignores the gradual increase in water content. Um, and so in this figure, what it's showing, uh, theta sub i is the initial moisture content. And then the delta theta is how much the moisture content increases to get up to fully saturated. And so the effective water content increase is uh, the theta sub r is how much moisture is bound to the soil that wouldn't ever be removed from uh, the soil unless you bake it. Uh, this is the porosity, and L is the depth of the wetting front from the surface to where that transition is occurring. You'll notice that here in the green app simplification, we assume that ponding occurs at the surface and it continues the entire time. And so what that means in terms of an actual storm event is that whenever you're using the green app simplification, you're trying to find out how deep the water front penetrates into the soil over time. You're assuming that from the beginning of the storm that there was enough rain to cause ponding at the surface. And that's uh, kind of not a great simplification and not a great assumption because in reality what happens is um, for a little while at least the capacity of the water to be absorbed by the soil is greater than the rate uh, of rainfall. And so ponding doesn't start immediately. It takes usually a few minutes into the storm before ponding occurs. But the green app simplification just assumes that there's continuous ponding. So here's kind of uh, the development of the calculations we do for the green app simplification. Uh, this is Darcy's law, which says that the flow of water through soil has to do with the difference in head between two locations. And so um, it could be the, the height of the water table at one side of an aquifer compared to the height of the water table at the other side of an aquifer, the distance between those two points, the cross-sectional area through which the flow is going, and then K is the hydraulic conductivity. And it's a soil property that measures how easily water can move through a soil of a certain type. And so a high hydraulic conductivity would be seen for gravel or sand, a very low hydraulic conductivity is seen for uh, soils that have a lot of clay in them. And so this is just saying uh, how easily water could flow <coughs> through soil as a function of the pressure that's forcing it through the soil, the length uh, that, the, the, um, the, that the water is flowing through, and then the cross-sectional area that it's doing it. So the green app simplification is based on Darcy's law and what we say is <coughs> let's kind of adapt these same ideas the idea of a driving force over a length an area through which the flow occurs and so the, the green amped method where you'd get units of cubic meters per second or volume per time out of Darcy's law uh, green amped is a little bit different because it's telling you an infiltration rate which is akin to a velocity so this omits the cross-sectional area parameter, but the rest of it is still there. It still has hydraulic conductivity, because that's a pretty important physical constant that just describes how easily water moves through different soils. But then what you'll notice here in the numerator is that they're using um, an estimation for the driving force. Um, if I just skip forward briefly to a figure that explains Darcy's law a little bit let me jump to that. So Darcy's law would say if you had a column of soil, so think about like if it was a plastic pipe that was packed with soil and you had it connected to a reservoir at one side that was elevated and connected to a reservoir at another side that was a little bit lower Darcy's law would say if, if you know the cross-sectional area of this soil column, and so that's the area that the water is flowing um, through, and H1 versus H2 would be the height of the water upstream and downstream. And so the delta H is in effect the driving force. It's the, the difference in head that's pushing the water through this length. So if we now jump back to 
the green amped method. What it's using as the driving force is the difference in, number one, the height, uh, the depth of ponding. See, H naught is the depth of ponding. And then how much energy is there at the other side has to do with psi, which is the wetting front soil suction head. And so um, it's a measure of the pressure underneath the ground it's a suction pressure of the water being drawn downward. And we can look up psi out of a table depending on what type of soil it is. And um, you also subtract out the length because that's going to have an effect on how much um, potential there is for drawing the water downward over time. So we can estimate the uh, the infiltration rate, and here it says the units of centimeters per second, simply because that is a typical, um, the units of psi usually are given in length units of centimeters. So we'll see an example here in a minute just to illustrate it. But what we're looking at is how quickly the water is penetrating down, the velocity that it's moving downward um, as a ratio of the penetrating depth so far and the physical constants of the hydraulic conductivity and the suction head of the soil. So this is infiltration rate, so centimeters per second. The cumulative infiltration rate, capital F, and this is a lowercase f for infiltration rate, capital F is cumulative infiltration, so you're integrating the infiltration rate over time. Um, that can be estimated by uh, applying the infiltration rate from the beginning of a storm up till a time of interest. And just to give you an idea of what's happening during a storm, the infiltration rate, lowercase f, starts high, but then it's decreasing. So there's a decreasing rate of potential infiltration because um, that gradient is decreasing, the more water gets into the pores, the less the suction pressure is that's drawing it downward. So in other words, it, the driving force is how eager the, water, the soil is for additional water. And over time, as the soil pores get filled up, then that suction pressure is decreasing. Um, there isn't as much tension when the water is in the soil as when the soil is dry. There's a big tension that's drawing the water down. And so the infiltration rate decreases during a storm, whereas the cumulative infiltration amount is going up, but it's going up more and more slowly. And so it's beginning to approach an asymptote. Now, we also have a rainfall hiatograph. And so what this is showing is, over time, what was the rainfall rate? And so, at, you know, at they're measuring this maybe in 15 minute increments. And so the initial storm rate was relatively high, then the rainfall rate went down a little bit, then the storm picked up a bit more. What they're shading is the area above the infiltration rate curve is what we call rainfall excess. And so the water that falls onto the ground that doesn't infiltrate has to run off. Broadly speaking, those are the, you know, the three things that are important for us to keep track of. The rainfall amount, the infiltration amount, and the difference between the two, rainfall excess, is the runoff. So rainfall excess represents how much is going to be moving towards a creek, how much is going to be going into a grate. It's just the extra water that didn't get down into the soil. So the volume under this curve is how much water did get into the soil. The area above the curve is runoff. So remember that over time, what we're assuming is that the water goes from the initial moisture content to the porosity. And the porosity means the, the total volume of the void spaces. So the increase in moisture goes from the initial water content all the way up to fully saturating all of the voids. And so the cumulative infiltration amount is going to be how deep down into the soil the wave has penetrated, so L 
is how far that wave went and then the difference between the porosity, which is fully saturated, and the initial moisture content. So what we have to do to find out how much infiltration there's been at a certain time is basically just keep track of uh, where is the wave and how far down into the soil the L is at a given time. And uh, for cumulative infiltration, this is an equation that estimates how, f uh, how much water has accumulated by keeping track of the depth of penetration. And so there's a lot of soil properties that go into this. The hydraulic conductivity is one of the soil properties. I've already mentioned psi, which is something we can look up that kind of, for, from soil to soil it varies, and it's how much uh, suction head there is drawing the water downward. Delta theta is the increase in the moisture content during a storm. And then you'll notice, unfortunately, this is an implicit equation, which makes it a little bit tricky to calculate. And you've seen equations like this before in hydraulics. Um, remember the Colebrook equation for estimating F, how uh, the unknown is both on the left side and the right side of the equation. And so this is similar in the sense that what we're solving for, the cumulative infiltration amount, is on the left side of the equation. It's what we're solving for, but it's a function of itself because the more that's infiltrated, the less the, uh, the rate is. And so the, the rate of infiltration decreases during the storm. And so we have to go through kind of an iterative process to calculate the infiltration depth where we start with a guess and we converge eventually till both sides of the equation equal each other. So I'll demonstrate that uh, with a spreadsheet that I've put in Blackboard for you. So again, this is the way that we're estimating the infiltration rate. And capital F is infiltration depth, or infiltration amount. And so there's a time component to this one. And to this one, it's just integrated during entire, an entire period. Um, so we assume that during uh, during the storm, all of the voids get filled up with water. And so the delta theta is assuming that the, um, all of the voids that can carry water are carrying water and that they're fully saturated as the wave moves through. So in a problem like this, you'd be given the, uh, the soil properties of K and Psi how much the moisture content is going up during the storm as it goes from the initial to the final. And then <clears throat> you'd be given some time period that we're interested in knowing how much infiltration occurred over what period. And you'd put in a, uh, a trial value of what is F sub T on the right hand side and then you'd find out uh, what is the output value on the left hand side and you'd continue to iterate until it converges. So we'll go through that in just a moment. That's the procedure that we're going to use. Now here's out of the book the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the soil properties for different soil types. And it's interesting to look at the, this parameter that may be the most new to us. I'm sure that you've uh, heard about and learned porosity and effective porosity and hydraulic conductivity and geotechnical engineering. But the wetting front soil suction head is something that is uh, maybe a little bit less common than just typical geotechnical and it's more of interest in uh, hydrology. And so you'll notice for example on the low side sand has pretty minimal suction head. Uh, 4.95 centimeters of head. What that means is that they can measure um, the pressure of the sand drawing the water downward from the surface. And if you express it instead of Pascal's, remember we can express pressures as heads which is Pascal's divided by the unit weight of the fluid. And so um, there's 4.95 centimeters of water suction downward when sand is dry and it's drawing water into the voids uh, in its pores. But at the other end of the extreme, clay has a very high suction head. And so 31.63 would maybe be a typical value, but the range of values goes all the way up to 156.5. And so that would be for like an oven baked clay with very fine voids. Um, you could have 
156 centimeters of suction pressure drawing the water downward. And so, um, I mean, that's a, a tremendous amount of pressure and it could lead to very high uh, infiltration rates. Uh, but remember that another factor that's governing infiltration rate besides the suction is the hydraulic conductivity. And so balancing out these really high suction heads are the low hydraulic conductivities. And so these two driving forces are in some ways at odds with each other. We'll see the combined effect of that. So hydraulic conductivity decreases from sand to clay, but the soil suction pressure increases from sand to clay. Now, the effective porosity, that's kind of interesting uh, to look at the, uh, the porosity versus the effective porosity. And um, the difference between porosity and effective porosity is that there may be some voids that aren't interconnected. And so the voids are larger in the case of sand, and it's less likely that there are going to be voids that aren't all connected together, whereas in clay, there can be some voids that maybe are a dead end because the clay is so tightly packed that it's surrounded on all sides except for one. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, the difference between porosity and effective porosity. All right, so let's jump into this example. Um, you've got the template file there, and what we're going to look at is for a certain type of soil where we can look up the, the soil properties we want to find out the cumulative infiltration depth and the infiltration rate after a certain period of time um, where it's been raining at least enough to uh, cause ponding at the surface from the very beginning. All right, so we want to find out after 0.1 hours and after 0.2 hours, then um, what is the infiltration depth and the infiltration rate. Now we can do this by hand, uh, kind of calculating the left hand side, right hand side, but we'll do this one by the spreadsheet. So if you have that uh, template file, Okay, let's copy over some of the data that we know here. So the effective porosity, this would be something we could look up out of a table if it wasn't already given for a certain soil type. So this is a silty clay soil. So the effective porosity, 0.423. The suction head for this soil type is 29.22 centimeters. The hydraulic conductivity, <coughs> 0.05 centimeters per hour. And now the effective saturation, um, forty-five percent. Okay. Point four five, and then the uh, delta theta. We're going to use this formula to calculate that. So it is 1 minus the effective saturation times the effective porosity. Okay. So the first thing that we do is uh, just start with a guess value. Um, so uh, a good guess, what we're solving for in this uh, right. infiltration depth and, and the infiltration rate. Uh, we'll start with a guess of hmm, just the maybe K times T. And so we want to know what's happening at 0.1 hour and also what's happening at 0.2 hours. We want to know how far the infiltration depth has gone and um, in those two different intervals. And so the first thing that we'll say is we'll estimate the OK, 
Okay, so for the right hand side, let's just do k times t and anchor that reference in case we want to just drag it down times this. All right. Now, we're going to do the uh, the full equation here. So it is going to be, again, k times t, k times t plus psi times delta theta times the logarithm of 1 plus. Now, this is where we're going to use the reference to our initial guess. Um, the formula is extending because it's centered. So where did I do that initial guess? Was it in C10? I think it was in C10. So I'm just going to type that in. Divided by psi times delta theta. OK. Now, if we extend the number of digits that we see, I think we'll see that those aren't yet exactly equal. So what we're looking for is we're looking for these two to be equal. And so uh, I'm going to find a difference because I'm going to set up solver, not goal seek. Uh, goal seek can converge too early, like it'll quit, just assuming that maybe um, you know 0 0.052 and 0 0.05 is good enough. Yeah. <coughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Good catch. All right. So what we're looking for is uh, this was just an initial guess. Um, we're looking for these two to be equal. And what we can tell it to change is this input of the f sub t. So maybe it would have been better if I switched which I put into what side. But um, So 0 0.005 is my starting point. So I'm going to replace that instead of uh, the equation. Now that I, I need it to be a number, because goal seek won't change an equation. So I'm just going to type in 0 0.005. That's my starting guess value. And this is relying on this guess value. And so what we're going to have solver do is change this until the difference is 0. All right, so let's see if I can get this to work here. So solver, if it's enabled, it looks like I'm going to have to install solver for this one because I think it isn't set up. So if you want to know how to turn on solver, you may have to go into the options add-ins, solver add-in, um, solver. OK, I'm going to turn it on. Okay, Now that I've turned on the solver add-in, I think I should be able to see it in that same data tab that I'd normally go to for goal seek. Did you guys have to turn on solver on your computers? They were already installed on those ones? So data, now here's solver. All right, so what we're trying to do is set this to a value of 0. And um, by changing this, which is our numerical guess of f sub t. OK, and click Solve. OK, so we're going to keep the solver solution. OK, so this is the right value. What it means is that uh, the cumulative infiltration depth in 0.1 hours, and so that's within six minutes. During six minutes of a storm, the 
wave of water has gone downward 0.264 centimeters. So you remember we watched those time-lapse videos um, in class on Friday. This would be a way of numerically estimating how quickly that wave is working downward. And they were in that experiment, they were doing continuous ponding. You know, they were controlling the valve and they were making sure that there was always an abundance of water at the surface. It doesn't have to be any certain depth, it's just assuming that, um, that the amount of water at the surface isn't a limiting factor in how quickly the water penetrates downward. So this is assuming that within six minutes the water would have gone down 0.26 centimeters. And now that's not very, that's not very uh, fast and it's because this hydraulic conductivity is so low. Even though there's a big suction head for this soil type, the hydro con hydraulic conductivity is kind of what's limiting how quickly the water is penetrating down through the soil. All right, so now that we know what was the infiltration depth, we'll use this formula to calculate the infiltration rate. So this infiltration rate, though, is instantaneous. It's right at six minutes into the storm, what is the infiltration rate? Whereas this, the cumulative infiltration depth, is integrating all of the infiltration rates from the starting of the storm up until 0.1 hours. This infiltration rate is instantaneously, so it's just at the moment of 0.1 hours into the storm, what's the infiltration rate? So to get that, we'll say that's the K value. I need to anchor that reference in case I drag it down. Times the psi. times delta theta divided by the cumulative infiltration depth plus one. Okay. So at this moment of time, you know, after the after the water has been ponding for six minutes, then the infiltration rate right now is 1.34 centimeters per hour. So that's how quickly the water is going downward. Actually, I guess I need to um, I need to distinguish between two different things. This is the rate that the water is getting into the soil from above, but the velocity downward is actually faster than this because um, remember, there's a lot of voids. So if, let me draw a sketch here. If we've got a lot of these voids that are packed on all sides by soil, all right, so what we're saying is it's going down at 1.34 centimeters per hour. That's the rate that it's entering the soil, but since there's so many of these soil grains packing this space, then the velocity that it's going through the voids is going to be faster than 1.34. Um, because 1.34 is acting over the entire cross-sectional area. You know, like if we look down from above, um, there's all of these spaces that the water can't, the water can't get in through the soil drain, it's just going around the soil drain. So the actual seepage velocity is greater than this infiltration rate. The infiltration rate is talking about up at the surface, what depth per time is the water getting into the soil. So did everybody get these two values, um, 0.264 and 1.34 for the infiltration depth and the infiltration rate? Now the um, the concept says that the infiltration rate is declining over time. Remember the, uh, the concept here of declining potential infiltration rate, that as the water gets further and further down into the column, the infiltration rate should be decreasing. And so let's test in this example whether this equation is accurate about that. Um, so let's repeat, I think, 
maybe is everything anchored that needs to be? No, I need to re-anchor a bunch of stuff. All right, because I'm going to drag that down just to 0.2 hours. So the K value, the reference to the suction head, delta theta, that I do want to go downward. The suction head, I'll anchor that reference, and this one. All right. So now let me put in some new guess here uh, for the cumulative infiltration amount, maybe 0.3 as a starting point. Okay, so I'll drag this formula down, and it's going to have some non-zero difference, which tells me I have to use solver again. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be telling solver to change this guess of f sub t, and then this is the output of this entire function. So data solver and what we want is to set the difference equal to zero by changing this right hand side solve okay so after 0.2 hours the total infiltration depth is 0.375 centimeters so in the first six minutes, it infiltrated quite a lot, well, relatively speaking, compared to the next six minute increment. So it's not doubling, it's much less than doubling, and so that does tell us that the infiltration rate is declining. And we can see that same thing if we drag this down, this formula for the infiltration rate, that the infiltration rate at 0.2 hours has declined from 1.34. Now the infiltration rate is 0.96 centimeters per hour. So the more of the voids that get filled up with water, there's less of the driving force that's bringing the water down from the surface. The suction pressure is decreasing because uh, the water is there and it's kind of satisfying the potential. All right, so that's the green amped method. Any questions about the spreadsheet or this illustration that we've just been through? Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you want to know how long it takes for ponding to occur, we, uh, in reality, know that um, at the beginning of a storm, the infiltration rate is greater than the rainfall rate. And so this is this rainfall rate. If we assumed that the rainfall rate was constant, the time to ponding is how long it takes until the infiltration rate is down uh, and equal to the uh, rainfall rate. And so at the beginning, when the rainstorm just begins, the infiltration rate is higher than the rainfall rate. And so we don't see any extra water at the surface. But we begin to see the water at the surface when there's more rain than the rate at which the soil can be absorb, uh, absorbing it. So in other words, this is rate per time. Now this is a graph of cumulative depth versus time. And what we're saying is we're defining the, uh, the time to ponding as uh, how long does it take until the infiltration rate is equal to, the, uh, the infiltration amount is equal to the cumulative uh, rainfall amount up to a certain time. And so this is the formula that we can use to calculate the time to ponding for a certain rainfall rate. And so the rainfall intensity here is I. All the rest of it is just soil parameters. And what this solves for is um, for a, a rainfall of a certain intensity, how long does it take until the soil is no longer able to keep up with the amount of rain that's falling out of the sky? You know, certain soils can absorb a lot. Certain soils become saturated really quickly. And you'd see the ponding at the surface after just a few brief moments of the rainfall. And this is how you'd calculate how long it takes to get to the ponding. So for this ponding time example, if we have the same constants that we had before, and we want to find out the time to ponding, then um, let me just illustrate how we would uh, calculate, first of all, 
if you have a constant rainfall intensity of 1.5 centimeters per hour, how long until the ponding occurs? Um, let me pull up the solution for that one just so we can get it all in. We've only got nine minutes left. So let me show you how the time to ponding calculation works. Okay. So these are the same soil properties as the previous example. And if the rainfall intensity is 1.5 centimeters per hour, so here we've got the uh, hydraulic conductivity, the suction pressure, the delta theta is the increase in moisture content during the storm. You notice that we put the rainfall in the same units that the hydraulic conductivity was. So if the hydraulic conductivity is centimeters per hour, we want the rainfall intensity to be in terms of centimeters per hour. So what this means is that for this particular soil and this particular storm, the, uh, the ponding is going to be seen at the surface after 9.4 minutes. So that's how long it takes until the rate of infiltration is lower than the rainfall rate. So this F is not necessarily the infiltration rate, but it's the potential infiltration rate because you can only infiltrate as much water as there actually is at the surface. And so it's important to distinguish between those two things. So constant rainfall intensity would be the 9.4 minutes. Now, we can solve it another way. What rainfall intensity would cause ponding after 20 minutes? And so in that, we're saying if T sub P is 20, then solve for I. So we just have to kind of rearrange things algebraically and we find the roots of an equation for that one because it's going to be a quadratic equation and it would either be a negative root or a positive root. So you can solve for the unknown infiltration, excuse me, the unknown uh, uh, precipitation rate if you know that you want to have a certain time to ponding. And so it would have to be a lower uh, rainfall intensity than the, the previous example. We had ponding after nine minutes because it was 1.5 centimeters. What we're saying is for that same soil, if you saw ponding after 20 minutes of a storm, then you could tell from knowing the soil properties what was the rainfall intensity. So it would be kind of an indirect way of measuring the rainfall intensity is using a stopwatch and um, if you really have a well-characterized soil, then you could relate the time to ponding with the rainfall intensity that must have caused that. And then the last thing, how, to, how much cumulative infiltration amount was there during that time? Uh, the cumulative infiltration amount, uh, we would, I guess, use the, the same approach that we had here of using this equation and um, basically use a guess value and then this is the same the same infiltration depth equation that we had before so these are all of the physical constants that existed on the first example, but if we want to know the cumulative infiltration amount, we start with a guess, and then you would use the solver to try and make the guess um, equal to, you know, both sides equal to each other. Um, the one other thing that we have to quickly take a look at so that you can use it on the homework assignment, the Horton model, is a lot easier way to estimate what's the infiltration rate. What the Horton model does is it just assumes that there is some beginning infiltration rate for a, a soil, uh, like kind of a, a minimum, and then over time you approach that minimum infiltration rate, but at the beginning of a storm your initial infiltration rate is much higher than that minimum. And so uh, a K value is describing how long it takes to go from your initial observed potential infiltration rate down to this minimum. 
And so you don't have to, um, it does assume continuous ponding, but you don't have to go to uh, an implicit equation to solve this one. Um, you just look up the physical property for a different type of soil and get the uh, minimum and the initial infiltration and kind of connect the two with a curve. Um, if you want to use the Horton model, this is infiltration rate. For infiltration depth, then here's how the equation would be used. Um, so just as an illustration of that, um, looking at this particular soil, if we have a, a leaf-filled loamy sand, you could look up the minimum infiltration, the K value, the starting point infiltration, and the infiltration rate after 15 minutes of 300 millimeters per hour of rain. Um, what we would do to calculate the infiltration amount I've got it here, but not on the, so let me do it on the board. All right, so if we have F naught is 288 millimeters per hour, and FC is 44 millimeters per hour, what we're saying is that even after all of the voids are full, Gravity is going to allow us to draw 44 millimeters per hour through the soil. And so the 44 millimeters per hour is saying that the suction tension is basically zero. And what's moving the water downward is a little bit of hydrostatic pressure at the surface due to ponding and the effect of gravity. The 288 millimeters per hour, that beginning infiltration rate, takes all three of those factors into account. It's saying that there's a big suction pressure, so it takes into account the initial suction pressure, gravity and ponding at the surface. Um, if we want to find out the F sub P, so this is the infiltration rate, then it would be the beginning F sub C, so 44 millimeters per hour, plus the difference between the initial and the final infiltration rate, so it's 288 minus 44, and then E to the power of our K value, so negative of 0 0.13 minutes to the minus 1. And then we want to know uh, after 15 minutes, what's the infiltration rate? So 15 minutes. So that E term is 0 0.1423. So the difference here is 244 millimeters per hour. So after 15 minutes, the infiltration rate is 78.7 .7 millimeters per hour. So it started off at 288 millimeters per hour just when the storm began. And after 15 minutes of infiltration, the rate has gone down to 78.7 .7 millimeters per hour. Now, if the rainfall is less than the potential infiltration rate, then it's not going to decline as quickly. Um, the, this, this curve, it's, it's assuming continuous ponding at the surface. And so um, the declining potential infiltration rate would decline less slowly if the wave isn't penetrating as quickly because there's simply not enough water to keep up with the uh, potential for infiltration. All right, so we'll, on Wednesday, continue talking about the concepts, but uh, hopefully that is enough exposure to the uh, spreadsheet method with green amped and the kind of just empirical paper-based method that we've got with the Horton. Uh, remember that the assignment's due Wednesday, so if you want to double-check your answers, you can send me an email or stop by my office, and I'll let you know if you are on the right track with that. And then we'll talk a little bit more on Wednesday about the... Uh, format of the midterm exam. So I'll see you then.